Today, I've got a great session and a great topic ahead of us. Uh, it's all around the magical morning ritual. I remember about five years ago, uh, I, was, I was really stressed out. Uh, I'd just come home from a speaking tour uh, in, in Asia, and I'd just come home, and I was so busy. At that time, I had uh, three hair salons and three gyms. And uh, one of the gyms is in Canada and I was in Australia. So I had all of these, you know, businesses. Plus I had a digital marketing agency and uh, that had about, about 30 odd staff in it. Plus I had an education company. Plus I had a speaking business. Plus, plus, plus I had all of this going on and I was tired and exhausted. And I got home on this Monday evening and I woke up the next day uh, on Tuesday and I had this tax bill that was a surprise and I was like oh now I've got this tax bill and I'm doing all this and it was it was going to wipe out a huge amount of the profits uh that I'd made and I was just oh it was just so much and so Tuesday morning I just decided to go for a walk here in the Gold Coast and I'm and I'm walking along the beach and as I'm walking uh you know along along the beach I I was there and I, I see these these two guys and well, actually what happened is I sat down on this this park bench and I just wanted a moment to myself and it kind of it was the morning sun and uh, it just felt so good. And I sat there and then I hear these these two older guys uh, come down and they were just noisy and laughing and annoying my little serenity, my little moment. And, uh, you know, to, to my horror, they decide to, you know, set up their little their, their fishing lines and their, you know, their, they had all sorts of things going on and net they were throwing out about 10 meters from me. Uh, you know, what's that? Uh, I, I guess it's about 30 feet. And so I was like, oh, gosh. And I start judging them. I'm like, look at these two. It's a Tuesday morning. Look at them. And that doesn't look like, like, oh, they had like holes in this. I was just like, oh, man, I have to down deal with this. <laughs> and I noticed myself judging them as I'm sat there judging them, you know, tired, jet lagged, busy you know, on social media, it looked like I was a super successful person and traveling the world, uh, you know, uh, doing all this speaking and all this talking and, you know, writing all this content and all this stuff. And, you know, oh, it looked so good. And then I see these two and I, uh, I get engaged in their conversation and, and listen. And they start, uh, they start talking about how grateful they are for the day and, well, they won't use those words, but how, you know, what a beautiful morning and a dream come true and living the dream. And something clicks inside of me. I actually realized that these two have more freedom and joy than I was having. And I realized that here was me with all of these things. I had millions and millions of dollars in revenue, but I, had, I didn't have anything I truly wanted. I realize that these two, and who knows, who knows their story. To me, they look like they didn't earn any money and, and they were just out there just, for, I don't know their story and didn't talk to them. But what I realized is it didn't matter in that moment, they had more freedom. They had more joy, they had more fun in their life. And I started to question and ask myself, how is it that I don't have that? I'm out here doing all these things and I say that I want it for financial freedom. I say, I want it for all of this. I say, I want it for all these reasons, but I don't even have it. In fact, I felt like my business and all my stuff, they all owned me. And I made a decision in that moment that I was not, I was not going to stay this way. I was going to change within the next year. I started doing some things a bit different. I sold all my gyms, all my hair salons. I closed down a, a, a digital marketing agency, shut it all down, moved everything into just one company and, and had a really good time. And, and I made a realization that I would be far, 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 far happier earning $5,000 a month and being able to experience life than I would be making millions and millions of dollars um, being a slave to the machine. And what I realized, and I want you to write this down, humans have a strange way of experiencing what we don't want and not experiencing what we do want. Isn't that interesting? We have a really interesting ability to, to be able to keep experiencing what we don't want to experience and, uh, and not experience what we do want. I wanted freedom. I wanted, to, I wanted success. I wanted freedom. But all I was doing was becoming more and more and more trapped by my decisions. Kind of crazy. I needed to shift. What I found out later is that my unconscious coding 
was repeating, repeating the exact instructions that I had given it when I was very young. And the instructions was given to chase, to be seen, to do big things, to get, get praised. That's what life's about. I never actually ever imagined that I would get there. And so every time I would get something, I had to add more and add more and add more to it to deny myself having it so that I could just keep the experience the same. And I realized that my unconscious was the programming was just keeping the same thing alive. And what was fascinating was it was different people, different instances, different times, different things, but the experience was the exact same experience that I had being so annoyed at having to go to school that I hated, being so frustrated that I wasn't an adult, not being able to buy the things and do the things I wanted. I realized I literally could map the exact same all the way back, the exact same feeling. It was the same experience. And then guess what? I could jump into the experience of my mother or father and they were having the exact same experience. Nothing had changed. I'd made different decisions. I'd had a different life. I had different people, but I kept on finding the same feeling, the same experience. And I notice this in others. I see people who create an amazing body and they still don't feel like they look good enough. I see people in the best relationship who feel lonely. I see people that dreamed of having a family. They dream, now they've got this amazing family. Now they just got so much to do. And, and, that, and that we keep on repeating the same things. And the reason is, which we've talked about a lot, is that our unconscious has an egoic agenda to keep things the same. Now, lucky for us, the unconscious is changeable. It is changeable. It is programmable. It actually is a complete open book, and it's really happy to take instructions and then repeat what it is that it's told again and again and again and again and again. Uh, what happens, though, is most people don't know how uh, to be able to go and create those. So we're going to talk about this today because there's one thing you can do that makes all the difference, and that is what you do every single morning. You see, the unconscious wants to keep creating what is what it believes to be safe. Whatever it believes to be safe, it will allow you to have. There's a way for you to use a very specific process so that you can create suggestions of what is safe. And that's what we want to make sure that we do. Instead of you trying to have it and then make sure you feel good, you feel it ahead of time. You be it before you see it. You become it before it comes to be. By doing this, you allow it to exist in your life. And what happens as you make the shift, as you make the change, that which you once was thought was a dream or a wish or a possibility is just easy, effortless and flowing. There is no struggle because you are it. There is no problem. I was sharing this with my inner circle group yesterday. It was yesterday morning. It was a very uh, cold, wet morning here on the Gold Coast. And at 5 a.m., I found myself out going for my normal morning run in the rain. And I was about three Ks or two miles into the run. And uh, it dawned on me that this was just different, that I didn't used to be like this. It was very obvious. I was like, I didn't used to be like this. And I was like, hmm, well, that's right. But this wasn't a struggle. I just, this is who I am. The shift was real. And also uh, a few weeks ago, I had a very similar experience after coming back from New Zealand, where I was, I was driving to work. And I just noticed that for the last two years, one of my investments had been paying me $50,000 every single month. And it hadn't seemed abnormal. And that's because I'd upgraded my consciousness. I had become it. So why is it that we do the morning routine? Why is it we do the morning ritual? Is to become it. So that it just flows. It just is. That's how it is. There's no fight. There's no internal dialogue that could think it could be any other way. So let's talk a little bit more about the unconscious. Okay. The unconscious is this incredible, fascinating part of your mind. And many have tried to compare the unconscious to the workings of some like, I don't know, great computer. And uh, in many respects, it's, it's like a great computer, but just more powerful than we could even really comprehend. And, and the unconscious aspect of you can make an infinite number of structural connections. In the book Flow, uh, it, it's believed that there's you know, over 3 billion uh, bits of information the unconscious is paying attention to in every moment. And so, Writers and musicians can use the unconscious uh, to complete what it is the self-conscious wants to do. And that's when you just see someone in complete flow. They've, they've practiced and taught themselves how to you know, play a certain sport and they become unconsciously competent. The challenge is many of us are unconsciously competent at programming lack or programming overwhelm. 
was speaking and, and talking with a colleague earlier today, unconsciously competent at, at thinking that, uh, you know, at, at continually creating the exact same situation again and again and again and again and again. I want to be needed. I want to be needed. Now everyone needs me. I'm overwhelmed. I want to be needed. I want to be needed. What, why does everybody need me? I'm overwhelmed constantly. I want to be needed. Well, it's actually, it's that, that that's creating this. And, and it, it's really interesting because that programming we designed and created, but we should actually be able to change. And this analogy shouldn't be taken too literally, but it's a nice one. When you take charge of directing your unconscious, the unconscious can start responding in automatic ways. How about this? What if your unconscious was this ally that you had taught how to do things and it just was played in the background exactly as you wanted it to be? What if you could just have your unconscious and it felt so weird if you didn't have abundance. It was just there creating abundance or creating confidence or creating love. What if you could figure out how to code it up, teach it, and then it would just play in that background for you? See, I find that very interesting. For those of you who are like, Chris, I've got a real problem with anxiety. Or I've got a real problem with this. I go, great. Would well, you know what you have got? Is you've got an unconscious that knows how to keep an instruction going. True. Like it knows how to be taught something and just keep playing it and playing it and playing it. That's a good thing. We just need to change that record. <laughs> you know, we need to take that one up, break that off, throw it away and put a new record in that says, I love my life. I love my life. I love my life. I'm happy and confident and free. Uh, you know, that's what we need, need to shift. And that, that's really, really fascinating. So see, the unconscious is deductive. It takes what it, what's there and it, and it creates meaning and truth from it. It doesn't have anything to create. So it doesn't bring anything into being, it notices how it is and then creates structure from that, deducts, it pulls, pulls it in. And it, it's very interesting. And since the unconscious is so good at taking suggestion and then repeating it, you can suggest and create new programming. But it's not as easy as it sounds. If you walk it down the street saying, I love money and money loves me, and you know you're lying to yourself, there's a silent or invisible instruction being played there that I must lie to myself. You see that? If you have to try to trick yourself, there's something else that your unconscious is picking up. It doesn't just dismiss the fact that you, you know, you're saying, I have millions in my bank account, I have millions in my bank account, there's, and there's a part of you that knows, no, you don't. It doesn't just dismiss a part of it, you know? It, it doesn't. It goes, yeah, okay, and that's not allowed or that's scary. There's so much more that it learns from that. Now, fueling a fire is a really good analogy uh, in the art of suggestion or art of creating or art of imprinting on your unconscious. If you put too little to the fire, you know, it, it won't burn. But if you put too much, you'll smother it. And so what we're going to talk about today is just this 15 minute a day process where you make choices, which is just enough every day to just teach the unconscious how you're going to be. Now, let me ask you, how many of you are doing the most important thing? Whenever I ask someone who's created big results, I say, what is it that you did? They say one thing, I do my choices every day. I do my choices every single day. I do the morning routine. Now, so for some of you that have been here a while, who's, who's, got, who's religious with this like me? Every day I do my choices. I step into it. I spend at least 15 minutes. Because it is the most important thing is every day, right after you wake up, while your brain is still sitting in maybe a, a delta uh, brain frequency or at least low beta and able to step in and, and do this. It is absolutely crucial. And if not today, it's, it's time, to, time to start. And so you want to make sure that you do this. The appropriate amount of fuel is every single day just to step into how you would like it to be. See it, feel it, be it, do it. Because here's the truth. Everything is a suggestion. Everything is a suggestion. And so trying to force your unconscious into something is not right. But just by doing the choices, and we'll do them today, by stepping into them and teaching your unconscious how it is, noticing what might be in the way of having that, it's just perfect. It's just perfect. You just choose it. And you just choose it. You just become it every day. You just become it every day. You just become it every day, every day. Until all of a sudden you look at your life and you go, wow, how is it this? That's magic. You see, magic is when our conscious brain can't figure out how something turned up. That's magic. Yeah. So everything is a suggestion. 
Action is a suggestion. Inaction is a suggestion. Trying to trick yourself is a suggestion. Saying you will do something and then not doing it is a suggestion in that. Does that make sense? Everything has two parts to it. It's important to realize the unconscious has no discernment. It just takes everything that's there. You see, getting frustrated at something suggests, and by the way, frustration is really interesting. It's actually two emotions, a sense of anger and a sense of hopelessness um, coupled with a little bit of desire. It's a really interesting thing. And you notice, well, what are all, what, if, I'm, if I'm frustrated at this, what is it that I'm teaching my unconscious? Can someone type that in? It's a great question. What am I teaching my unconscious with this behavior? What am I teaching my unconscious? What is my true outcome? What would I like to be teaching my unconscious? Knowing that it's this beautiful ally. So following through is a suggestion. Following through is a suggestion. Every time you have an intention... And then you fulfill that intention. It is seen by the unconscious as a success. A series of recognized, established successes creates momentum. Now, every day we have, we have millions probably, or at least thousands of small intentions. These little successes are such a strong suggestion. And so one of the best ever suggestions that you can give to your unconscious is i think something up i decide to do it and it's done the unconscious doesn't really know the difference between you creating a million dollars and you creating a, a healthy breakfast or you saying you're going to go for a run and you finding uh the, the ideal relationship to the unconscious that all fits under you creating something new so one thing you'd love to teach your unconscious, who agrees? Give me a yes right now in the chat box. If you would like to teach your unconscious that when you decide something, it happens. Mm. Your morning routine gets to be a suggestion. I decide to do my morning routine. I do it. I do my choices. It's done. I wake up, I go for a run. I have my, my healthy nutritional drink. It's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. In the first 30 minutes after waking up, you could teach your unconscious that one, you do follow through, that two, that the, the new end results you want to create, three, that you are, you've got an abundant amount of nutrition around you, that, that you take care of yourself, that you could give it so many suggestions, couldn't you? Small successes repeated the unconscious goes, I'm a winner right from the beginning. So you intend to get up at a certain time, you do. Success. You intend to get dressed. Success. You intend to be on time. Success. You intend to you know, do a workout. Success. You meditate. Success. Choices. Success. Have your green, healthy drink. Yes. Have your nutrition. Yes. You know, make your kids food. Yes. Do this. Yes, 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 yes. You could have so many that you chose to do something you did. You could be such a follow through person, you know, and just create that. And that's why the morning routine is so important. It's not what the morning routine is. It's that you choose to do a morning routine and you follow through. Being a follow through person is what the morning routine is about. <laughs> Everyone thinks it's about that, but it's, a, it's about making a commitment and being someone who's someone who makes commitments and follows through. A person who rises an hour early and does exercise, it benefits them the exercise, right? Like that makes sense. We know that endorphins, uh, you know, healthier body, cardiovascular system, that, that's all good. But it benefits their consciousness even more because they made a commitment to themselves and followed through. And I don't know about you. I don't know which one's more important. They both sound good. But I really believe that a lot of time, my morning routine, when I finish it, I've just taught my consciousness that I'm a follow through person. And then when I go to do something else during the day, I'm already a follow through person. And every day I'm a follow through person. I wake up and the first thing I'm teaching my unconscious is I'm a follow through person. I do what I say. I say what I do. I do what I say. I say, that's who I am. That's what I do. And so if I say I'm going to do it, if I write it down, it's done. 
And do you see that? Do you see the power in that? It's such a simple thing. And that's why I think it's a keystone habit. The keystone, meaning it unlocks everything. It's a keystone. It holds the arch. It's the one, it's the one thing that if you just could get this done, everything else opens up. It's very, very exciting. If you recognize and define every single thing you do in the morning as a success, the unconscious concludes that your intentions succeed. Creating this pattern of success becomes a symbolic suggestion to the unconscious that enables you to produce major results with ease. See, the unconscious generalizes that you succeed in your intentions. It doesn't matter if it's large or small, your unconscious says, they do what they say. That's what we do. That is what we're taught to do. If we say it, we do it. This is so, so, so powerful. And just sit with that for a second. How powerful is that? That's what a morning routine is about. That's what it's about. The way you start your day gives the biggest suggestion to your unconscious mind about what is important to you. You know, I don't even look at, at my phone until at least an hour and a half or two hours after I'm awake. I don't even, I don't have any, I don't even, I don't have anything other than me and my choices and, and talking to my wife and going for a walk. That's all I have, you know. I love to make sure in the morning that I'm focused, that I'm hydrated, and I love to give myself great nutrition. So I use a green drink uh, to, to teach my body that I'm abundant. I have all the nutrients that I need. It doesn't take long to, to be able to start being someone who has this. So for me, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's 15 to 30 minutes every single day that I do it. And, and I think, and I know that others have, many of you have super busy lives. Some of you live in places where maybe walking or doing things outside in the morning is definitely not available. But I know that if every single one of us can just choose to own one part of our day, you can choose to get up 20 minutes earlier. You can choose to find 20 minutes to yourself, have a copy, have a meditation, whatever it is that your morning ritual is going to be. But it doesn't have to take long. Out of everything that you can do in your day, who's ever experienced this? There's so many parts of your day that you don't really have control over. Does that make like there's lots of parts of your day you just don't have control over? Like, you know, there's the traffic, there's, the, there's weather, there's kids, there's school, there's universities, there's there's colleagues, like there's, there's bosses, there's clients, there's lots of, but the one at the end of the day, like there's one time you have control. And that is you can just get up before 30 minutes before and, and, and you can control that. You can control that. Like, and I love that. I know that, that every person on this call, they can find that. And that's where you can put your magnetic mind work. That's where you can put it. And if you don't, if you do nothing but that, your life's going to change completely. That's the place that you can do it. And it's so exciting. And so part of my intention today is kind of selling you on creating whatever morning routine and ritual is right for you. But whatever it is, it's going to create such a strong uh, connection with your unconscious of being a follow through person, of being a successful person, of being someone who sets intentions and then does it. And it's like, it's something we can all do, you know? It, it doesn't matter where you are on your creation journey, where, where you are, the one thing you can control is you can win with a morning routine and you can start out the day as a success. And that's, and that's incredible. Start it as success, get a win before the sun goes up. You know, you, you can do that. And it is especially those who who are challenged by that. Like I am not I was not a morning person and I was challenged by that. And so it became something that I was like, yes, yes, I chose it. I'm I'm the predominant creative force because look at me. Here's the proof. I'm awake doing my choices. You see that there's literal proof to the unconscious. I am choosing a life I love. And what I'm choosing is this. Look, here it is. Here it is. It's here. 
Does that make sense? It's here. Like this, the unconscious can't deny it because it's you're doing it. You see that? It's one of the easiest manifestations because there's nothing else that is needed to achieve it. And it does so much for you. It does so much for you. When you become a follow through person, when you become someone who does something and sticks to it, you watch how you change in every other aspect of your life. Incredible, incredible. It's do it for a month, uh, test it out. I promise you it will be really, really huge. So anyway, your morning routine is a really big suggestion, okay? Uh, what we do mainly in our morning routine is choice making because choice making and visualization is a very, 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 very powerful form of meditation and meditation. There's lots of studies that say in the morning is the best. However, it's not a meditation that you'll fall asleep to because it's active. It's active meditation. When we start our day with choice making, with visualization, we give ourselves the best opportunity to be in action and be a success right from the beginning, right from the beginning. So how do we do this, this choice making? Okay, let's make sure that we all know exactly how to do it. I've tried to move through this really fast, so I've got loads of time to take you through it. So the first choices that I make every morning, are my core four choices. So we're going to go ahead and let's make those. All of you know how to do these, unless you're brand new, uh, you know how to make these choices. So let's make them. Here's how I make these four. I step into the end result of them being true now and notice what it would be like. By stepping into what that means is I imagine there's a future me out there in the future who's already experiencing that in perfection. And I step into their body. I put my fingers in the finger slots and my feet in the feet slots and my heart where the heart goes and I see through their eyes and hear what their ears and I breathe into their lungs and I notice how it is to already have that. So let's make the first choice. Let's choose the end result of living a life that we love. So follow along with me. Please close your eyes and make the choice. I choose the end result of living a life I love. Now go into the future and find a moment where you'd be experiencing this. What is a moment in the future where you'd be experiencing a life you love? Please step into that moment now and see it through your own eyes. See it through their eyes of the you experiencing it. Hear with the ears of the you experiencing it and feel into this body and fully feel it and connect. Notice how it feels. Notice what it's like. Notice what you're doing and breathe it in. I choose this. I choose this. Hmm. Teach your unconscious how it will be. Hmm. Fantastic. All right, that's one done. Come back to now. So the second choice that we'll make is I choose the end result of living, the being the predominant creative force in my life. And this means you're the magician, you're the one in charge. Others, others can do things to you or, you know, crash your car, but you're the one that's the creative force. You're choosing how you're going to be. You're going to choose how you're going to be. And so there's a, there's a version of you out there that's just in charge of life has risen above the chaotic mess is up here and can see it and go this is how i'm choosing it to be choosing to feel choosing how how i will respond so when you're ready please close your eyes and make the choice i choose the end result of, of being the predominant creative force in my life and ask yourself what would be a moment in the future where i'm already experiencing this and step into that version of you what's it like hear with their ears breathe with their lungs see with the eyes of the you that's the complete predominant creative force in life and really get a sense of how that is hmm. 
Fantastic. Awesome. So that's two down. Come back to now. Open your eyes. Now we step into the end result of health and vitality. Same process. Go ahead and close your eyes as you do make the choice. I choose the end result of health and vitality. Find a time in the future. What will you be doing with your body? What will you be doing with your time? What's a moment in the future? You'll be living completely health and vitality. Just pick one. Step into that and notice how your body feels. See with their eyes, hear with their ears, feel into their body and notice what you'll be doing, having, being, seeing, feeling, witnessing, saying, hearing, be there and fully live it. So good. And now come back to now. That's fantastic. So we got one more, last one, my true nature and purpose. These are in no order, by the way, they're equals. The last one is I choose the end result of living my truest nature and purpose. When you're a creator, you're applying your purpose. You're out there, you're, you're, you're turning thoughts into things. So when you're ready, make the choice. I choose the end result of living my truest nature and purpose. Ask your super conscious, what would that be like? Find a moment in the future where you live in it. See it through your own eyes, hear it, feel it, be it. Live your true nature and purpose fully. What would that be like? What's one moment where you'd be truly living that purpose? Feel it with your heart. Fantastic. So now we're considered oriented. Okay. Uh, took us less than four minutes to do that. I don't worry about trying to get the same vision. Uh, I just choose it. I acknowledge it. Here's the key to doing uh, the orientation is that you have to feel it in the present moment. By using these choices, you feel it in the present moment. And guess what? The unconscious only assumes that that's who you are now. Give me a yes if you get it. The, uh, the unconscious just assumes you've stepped into that, you're that, that's it. You're not trying to trick yourself. You're just stepping into a future moment. Your unconscious is assuming that's you now. You're being it before you see it. You're teaching it. Very cool. So we do this first. We do this first. Every morning I spend, only what we took four or five minutes then, didn't we? Not long at all. Now I pick two of my choices. I have to bring my choices list out of my pocket. Where's Chris Boys? He always tells me off for having my uh, choices not uh, on digital form. I have my choices written out. Now, there's a few different types of uh, choices. The first type of choice is an end result. An end result is a finished completion. An end result might be one year, it might be six months, it might be three years down the track. An end result has the full emotion of everything finished. But sometimes if your end result is to create you know, a world-changing business that impacts, uh, impacts the uh, billions of people on the world, that's fantastic. But there's no way to teach your unconscious that you're successfully moving towards it. So if we have a big end result, we have a next desired reality. And I want you to imagine that you're traveling from one side of the country to the other side of the country. The end result is the final destination, right? But you know you're going to stop here next. So what we do is we get the energy of where we're going. And then we focus on creating the next end result, the next desired reality. So we have an end result and then we have a desired reality. The end result is the full completion of, of it and how it is. When you do lenses, you'll have your choices, which are normally desired results, 
uh, written out of things that you want to uh, that you want to see completed. So your choices, there's no uh, there's no way to to do these uh, other than stepping into them and acknowledging how they are. One mistake people get when they do our lenses process and lenses is a metaphor for looking at the same thing in different areas of focus. What that means is if, if I was to look at a mountain, I would see a big blurry mountain. That might be the end result. If I was then to zoom in a little bit, I might see you know, a, a bunch of trees. Now that's still part of that same mountain. It's just a different focus. Then if I zoomed in even more, I might see just one tree. If I zoomed in even more, I might just see one leaf. And then if I zoom in even more, I might see like an insect on that. I'm actually looking at the same thing, but just with a different lens. And so once we get to your end result, we choose it, we know where we're going. That's fantastic. The next reality is, is a smaller version of it. Like those Russian dolls, it fits into each other. So you choose this big end result, but you know, yeah, my end result is financial freedom. Right now I need this. Right now I'm doing this and this is going, this is that. So I tune into that. I notice what's next, right? So the, my end result is uh, I want to impact the world. My next thing is I need to write a book. Does that make sense? That's the next thing. So that's going to teach my unconscious success. Yes, I did it. So that's the difference between uh, end result uh, and desired reality. Now, if an end result is the big finish one, a desired reality will be different for all of you. Some people will have a 30-day desired reality. Some of you have a six-month desired reality. There's, there's no um, right or wrong. What you want to have is big end results. You want to have some milestones. And then you want to break it down to what it is you're going to be able to do this week. Does that make sense? You want to be able to go, that's where I'm going to be in however long. My next big chunk is there, but this week, this is what needs to get done. And that helps you to take something from the, the macro and turn it into actually what has to happen. Many people have a hard time bringing their thoughts into reality. They just want to stay in airy, fairy, uh, uh, invisible land. And uh, that's fine. Everything's created in two planes. Everything's created in two different planes. Everything that you see manifest is first made in the invisible and then in the visible. And therefore, there's rules in each that need to be done. Yes, you need to be able to tune in and experience it in the invisible. And then, yes, you want to be able to experience it in the physical. That's what we're here to do. So you, you do need both. And a lot, a lot of people have a challenge. They just want to stay because guess what? When you fantasize uh, or romanticize about something, there's no way to fail. You can romanticize and fantasize about the most amazing relationship and you can just make it just work. But actually experiencing it involves you actually getting and taking some action and doing things now. So many people avoid doing lenses, one, because they don't actually want to have to risk experiencing it and doing it. And that's, that's fine. The second thing that people make a mistake when they're doing their lenses or creating their to-dos is they think it's a to-do list. A lot of actions is continue what you're doing. You know, talk to this person. It's not a to-do list. It's a next uh, big thing list. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. So, so here's, here's how we do it. Uh, we first step into the end result. We step into the end result. So remember, we're still on our five-minute clock. So we're at five minutes in our morning. Every day, I do two choices. I do two choices, okay? So right now, I'm working on uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got eight extra choices, which is quite a lot, to be honest. Uh, I, uh, on top of my orienting choices, eight is a lot. Eight is a lot. Usually I, I recommend, you know, five or six. Right now I've got eight. I've got a lot, lots of things that I'm going for, which is, which is really fun. Really fun. I choose two every single day. And that means over seven days, I've worked on up to 14. Or usually for most of us, each choice has had two mornings where you've really sat in that choice. 
So here's what we do is we pick a choice. And so uh, my first choice on the top of the list here uh, says I choose the end result of impacting millions by owning the premier conscious education company. That's a nice choice. So what I do is I choose the choice by doing just what we did just before. So could everybody give me a one in the chat when you've got a choice to work on right now? Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, good, that's enough. You're all there, let's go. Okay, so when you're ready, it's the same process. First step, please close your eyes and make the choice. I choose the end result of. That's it. And now find a moment in the future where you would be already successful and experiencing that. Step into that moment. See it, hear it, feel it, be it. Notice how that is. Put your heart in the space of the person who already has it. What's that like? Hmm. So good. All right, open your eyes and come back. Fantastic. So now we want to acknowledge what it's like now. This one's really easy because you are it. So you just ask yourself, compared to that, what's it like now? What do I have in life now compared to that? What do I believe in life right now compared to that? What is it that stops me being that? Hmm. And so I normally just tune in and I and I write down a few things of how it is now. So you might write down, you know, I've got a fear of rejection. You might say right now, it's a seedling compared to where it wants to be. Or you might write, I'm in momentum, baby. Whatever it is, you just acknowledge how it is now. Everything is created by two points. A structure needs two points of information to exist. So we do first step, second step. Okay, now third step. Okay, and we just note that. We step into the end result again. As we step in the end result, we look back to the current reality and we ask ourselves, what's the next obvious action that we must take? Okay. Now, for some of us, we'll get a, a, a clear, you got to do this. You got to have this conversation or you need this sorted or I don't know what's needed next. You need to find what's next. There's always a what's next and you'll, you'll be able to really get it. Sometimes you already know. You're like, yep, Chris, I don't even need, I know what's next. Sometimes it's a sound, sometimes it surprises you, but I do it all the time. Okay, so when you're ready, please close your eyes and step back into the end result. Back into that end result, that picture of how it is. <laughs> and feel it. Go into that end result and be it. Pick up that energy. Now, in your mind's eye, look back to the current reality. What is it that he or she needs to do next? Needs to uh, focus on next? Needs to release next? Needs to recode? What is it that must happen next? Give instructions to that present reality, like you're giving advice to someone else. What must they do next to become you? Open your eyes and write down what needs to happen next.
So once you have uh, what must happen next, you've now got all the three pieces to, to manifest, where it is you're going, where it is you're now, and what must happen next. And the only reason you wouldn't take action a, a, on that is that there's a part of your uh, consciousness that has been designed to work against it. See, that's, that's all it is. And so, so now, so I will do that. And uh, if I've got resistance, so let me ask you, how much resistance do you have to that end result? How much resistance do you have to taking that step out of, uh, out of 10? What resistance might you have? And I just acknowledge it. So um, I will do two of these a morning. A lot of times I have no resistance. So this is the morning routine and it doesn't take very long at all. It doesn't take very long at all. So I will do the core orienting choices. I'll just tune into them and then I'll pick two of my main choices and I'll, and I'll work through each one every single day. How good is that? And that's it. That's it. And it's literally once you get, once you really get good at it, under 20 minutes. And then when you, you know, maybe you've been doing it for five years like me, you go for a run and you make your choices on the run and you need to slow down and do a bit of a walk. If you do your choices every single day, even if it's just the orienting choices and one other, you will not recognize your life in all the good ways you would like to within the next three to six months. If that's all you do. That's the keystone habit. And if all you do is make that the one success that you get done every day for the next month, your unconscious will start to notice that you're somebody that says they do something and follows through. If that's it. If that's it, if that's it, your, your, your unconscious will go, yeah, when we say we're doing something, we follow through. And that's the power of commitment. There's only five steps to the process. Choose your end result. Get structural tensions. Tap into the end result and ask what's the next step. Unplug, recode, take action. Five simple steps. However, in the simplicity, there's lots we can talk about and, and help with. Yet, if you miss the basic of the basic of the basic, which is every single day you make your choices, the rest of the fancy understanding and knowledge will just be adding water to a dirty fishbowl and it won't get you the result you want. That dirty fishbowl will just tank that water. You must do your, your morning routine.